What is up everyone? Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. My name is Saren Death, and I am excited to bring you all Gen Greymane today. Now Gen just dropped about two hours ago, and he's been on my radar since, well, BlizzCon. I played a few games with him so far, but I really wanted to go through my process of learning a new hero with you all. Uh, we're going to go into a quick bot game, we're going to read through all the talents, and we're going to sort of go through and choose a build based off of those. Now this is going to be gut reaction type stuff. Now, like I said, I have played a few games with him. I do know what I'm kind of looking for, but this is just the process I go through when I'm learning something new. Now, if you're looking for a quick match or a PvP game, check back later in the week. There will be one featuring Gen Grey main then. Um, and we'll see how our build sort of shakes up throughout the week. We'll make some modifications to it, and then we'll come back with something that's hopefully going to work later on. But for now, we're just going to play around, check out some talents, and have some fun. So, without further delay... Let's get into the game. Vilnius will rise again. All right, today we are going to be hopefully crushing some bots in the Dragonshire. Really quick, my team: Kielthas, Rainer, Arthas, Sergeant Hammer, Greymane, and the team of New Borak, Jaina, the Lost Vikings, Zazbadan, and Vala. Okay, so we're going to go over the talents really, really fast, and then we're going to go over his basic abilities. So the first tier talents: Wolf Heart, basic attacks. Um, this attacks lower Inner Beast cooldown. This is great because Inner Beast has a 16 second cooldown, so this might be a fantastic talent to pick up, even if you're going to go for a different style of build. Uh, perfect aim, increase Galean to Cocktails range by 30%, that's very important, and refund 60 mana if it hits an enemy hero. Now, I don't know if this is if it's a direct hit or if it's just splash damage. We can test this out in just a second because that's the talent we're going to be taking. Our other one is called Scented Ticture. I guess that's how you pronounce that. Galean Cocktail reveals enemy heroes for 10 seconds. That is a great ability, um, but I just feel like the other talents in this talent here might be slightly better unless your team really needs that vision. And of course, Viciousness, increase inner beast duration to 4 seconds and causes ability damage to also refresh its duration. Now normally it's not the... Normally it's not uh, abilities that are going to refresh it, it's only going to be basic attacks. And as you guys can see the little timer over here, um, it keeps refreshing based on... The ancient shrines oh. awaken. She was outside Control the range. Them okay. Let loose the dragon knight. Uh, it, it's a 60 second cooldown, but it, the duration keeps going up. You can see the little timer over here. That's what this little thing is. Um, and every time you get a basic attack out there, it's going to refresh it. Okay, so our ability is really quick. Q is called Gilnean Cocktail in our human form. Basically what this does is it's a skill shot that is going to send a... It does a little bit of damage to the person it hits, but the big thing is it's going to explode and put out a lot of damage. We're going to go to the top lane, the help out up here, power uh, to the people behind it. Uh, in our warden form, it is instead called Razor razor Swipe. And basically what that does is it's going to allow us to swipe out and deal some damage in an area. We're in a bad shape, we got to run. Alright, so you see me use my E right there in our... Um, human form, it's called Dark Flight. It allows us to jump in at the enemy, deal some damage to them. They're going to run, deal some damage to them, and turns us into a Worgen. When we are in our Worgen form, it's called Disengage and allows us to get out of the action. Um, our trait is called Curse of the Worgen. Basically what this does is it allows us some of our abilities to uh, function differently depending on the form we are in. And our basic attacks are going to function differently as well. When we are a warden, um, our basic attacks are going to be melee only and deal 40% more damage. When we are a human, our basic attacks are going to be ranged. And I didn't go over Inner Beast, but basically what this does is it's a 50% attack speed boost that, like I said, refreshes when you hit uh, with auto attacks. Uh, it is a 16 second cooldown, so I would recommend using it uh, when you know you can sustain in the lane, like you're attacking your structure, or you're trying to clear a minion wave or something like that, or if you're trying to get a nice little bit of burst damage out there. Okay, next to tier of talents. Let's try and go over these really quick. Thick Skin is basically a block after you use Dark Flight. You're going to be able to jump in and reduce the amount of damage you're going to take. Okay, eyes uh, in dark. Let's see here. Disengage against stealth. This is great, except my problem with it is that it doesn't... It's great, but 
you're not going to be able to disengage. You can disengage 50% of the time. Now, when you dark flight in, you have six seconds before you can disengage back out. So unless you're going to be chilling in wolf form, I don't think you're going to get as much use out of that. Um, because if you jump in and you mistimed it, you're going to be dead anyway before you're going to be able to get out. Okay, you have Insatiable. This is an inner beast. Causes base attacks to restore mana. I like that. Uh, drought Overflow. Increased Galean Explosion. Length by 35%. We're going to take that. I like that. So we're going to be going with sort of a Q-style build then. Alright, so he uh, bought those guys off. Used his bribe. Okay, now next talent tier. Quicksilver Bullets increases human's basic attack range by additional 20%. That's not bad. It's not bad. No. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Alright. Uh, we have Incendiary Elixir. Galean Cocktail deals 200% more damage to the enemy and impacts. Even if it misses. Oh, and explodes even if it misses. That's really nice. That's great for team fights. Um, so that way, you, you, even if you hit like the wrong person initially with it, you're still dealing a bunch of damage to them. Uh, you know what? Uh, then we have Wizened Duelist. Now, Wizened Duelist is basically... Uh, gathering power for your basic attacks. 3% more damage per enemy kill. Stacks up to 30%, but you'll lose all stacks when you die. So we're going to be going with the Q build again, Incendiary Elixir. We're going to be messing around with that. Okay. We just hit talent tier. Uh, four, which is our heroics. Let's see here. Go for the throat. This is a very cool ability. 60 second cooldown. Uh, basically, you jump in at the enemy, turn into a worgen, and deal a bunch of damage to them. And if you kill them with it, you can use it again within 10 seconds. So basically, you can like jump around and deal a bunch of damage. Um, Mark for the kill is a skill shot that um, basically the first enemy you hit is going to be become vulnerable, taking extra damage. And we're going to go down and get the bottom lane. Uh, they're going to take 25% extra damage. And then you can reactivate this again and leap at the marked target, dealing even more damage to them. So we're going to go with that. Since we're going with sort of a human-style range build, I think this is going to be beneficial to us. Alright. I don't really want to get the, uh, the Dragon Knight because I want to show you guys some of these abilities. Boom, baby! I like the explosion. It's pretty cool. For my countrymen. Now, I haven't played too many games with uh, with him yet, but I have messed around with a few of the other talents. There is a very interesting build that I've kind of been toying around with where the idea is you stay in Warden form most of the time and you use your E to, to just run um, and escape. And that one basically centers around using Inner Beast a bit more. Once this wall's down, I feel like I can probably do some weird stuff, like engage in. I really want to test out this this mana thing. Let's see here. We're going to try and hit as they run away. Well, run away! Hmm. I want to hit him with the splash, but I need to make sure I'm not going to get... We're not going to hit anybody initially. Just it was too good to pass up. Okay. We need to back out. Now, one of the problems I see with Gen just innately is... How do I miss all these guys? Is that he has no real escape except for the disengage, so keep that in mind. Okay, this one. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have enough time actually to for this talent. Yeah, I think we're gonna go in for the kill, maybe. Nope, we're gonna go up here. Okay, so this talent here, let's see here. Running wild, disengage, and dark flights range increase by 33%. 35%. Visceral attacks, uh, Warden's basic attack boost, Razor Swipes, cooldown by one second. That's not too bad. Um, on the Prowl, Inner Beast increases movement speed. What's the movement speed boost? 30% for three seconds. That's not terrible. Now, my question is, I wonder if it is refreshed. I'm gonna miss. I wonder if it's refreshed uh, when it, the other stuff is refreshed, it's only the three seconds. Okay. And Unfettered Assault increases Razor Swipe's range, but increases the cooldowns. We're going to go with Hold the Prowl. You know what? Let's see here. It definitely seems like uh, it just increases... Yeah, as long as you have it up, you're going to be able to run really, really fast. Backing out. Not getting away from me, lady. Oh no. Oh, that was a 
Let's back off. Let's back off. <laughs> the beast hunter. Okay. We are very, very low in health, and that's going to be a quick GG. Now, we're going to go over the other talents here really fast once we get out of the game, and I'll give you guys my initial impressions after playing a few bot games with it. Um, so we'll see in just a second. All right, now that we are out of the game, I wanted to go over two builds that I'm looking at for Gen and give you my initial impressions on him. So, initial impressions first. I feel like he is a massive damage dealer that is going to suffer from two problems. One, he has no real health regen or sustain while laning or in team fights. And this kind of plays in number two, he has no real escape. Now, I know that his E, while in a warring form, allows him to disengage, but... I think that even when he uses that, he's going to suffer from the problem that of the first one. He's not going to have any real health regen while he's in that melee action. So, while he's warging form, he's going to be in there taking a bunch of damage. And unless he's getting lots of heals from his healer, he's not going to be able to get more health back. So basically, he's going to have to jump in and out of combat. But the problem is, Dark Flight has a 6 second cooldown. So, you can jump in, and then 6 seconds later, you can jump out. Or, you can jump out, and then you can jump back in 6 seconds later. You see the point? Basically, the problem with him is that the his only escape has a very long cooldown, and 50% of that time, it's not an escape, it's an engage. While I think the ability is really cool and it gives him a unique playstyle, I think he's going to suffer from that. Um, the health regen issue mixed with the escape problem, especially during a laning phase, can cause some kind of issues where you're basically forced to play a bit safer. Now, that's not a problem, that just means, that means you, need, you may need to adjust your playstyle a little bit when you want to play again. So... Now on to the builds. Now, there are two builds that I'm looking at. One I'm gravitating more towards, so we're going to go over that one first. And that is basically using his Q or his Gil name Cocktail. So, for the first talent here, we're looking at two builds for this. Wolf Heart, which is, um, while Inner Beast is active, all your basic attacks are going to lower its cooldown by one second. Now, this is going to sort of make more sense when I show you the talent later on, but just keep this one in mind. The one I'm leaning more towards, though, is the Perfect Aim. Uh, mostly because this increases the Gildane Cocktail range by 30%, which means you can actually play safer in the start of the game. Um, now again, remember the Gildane Cocktail, it does a little bit of damage to the target initially hits, and then the splash damage behind it is going to deal even more damage. And the way most people play is they play behind their minion waves. So what this means is this gives you a very nice poke. Hit the minion wave with it, or the front line with it, that's going to then splash back and deal more damage to enemy heroes. So very cool ability. And that's kind of why I'm leaning towards this one for the Q build. Now, at 4, we're going to take Drought Overflow. And basically what this is going to do is, now the explosion length is going to also be increased by 35%. So if they're playing even further back, now they're going to take even more damage. Because right about now, you're still in the laning phase. And I feel like this is going to be a very good ability for you to take. Um, that's going to increase the damage. And this is going to function very well in team fights later on. At 7... I think Incendiary Elixir is the way to go, and here's the reason why. For two reasons. One, it now means that you're dealing 200% more damage to the initial target you hit, so it's going to deal a bunch of damage to whoever gets hit by it. So now you can actually hit heroes with it, and you're going to have to feel bad about it because now you're dealing 200% more damage to them initially. Um, now the big thing, though, is whenever it impacts, no matter where, even if you miss with it, it's still going to explode, which means that if an enemy uses a dash to get out of your range, and they're at a sliver of life, you can still throw the cocktail in the blast radius from that, 35% longer, remember, from your level 4 talent, is going to deal even more, or it's going to still hit them and potentially kill them now. So now people can't really get away from you uh, while using this unless they're mounted or, you know, are able to dodge. And even then, remember, it's a cone, so it's going to be a lot easier to hit. At 10, I'm a big fan of Mark for the Kill for this build, and here's the reason why. Uh, this sort of functions very well with the sort of play style. You're able to sit back, it's got a very long range, you snipe somebody, deal a little bit of damage to them, they're going to be vulnerable, taking 25% more damage from all of the splashing from your Q and all this other stuff. And if you really want to, and they're, they're just about ready to get away, you can pop this thing again, jump in at them, and finish them off. And it's going to turn you into a worgen, so for 6 seconds you're going to be a worgen, and then you can jump back out with your disengage, and by that point in time, your Q should be back off a of cooldown, so you can toss your Q again and deal some more damage. I think this is a really great thing and plays very well to the strengths of this build. At 13, we're looking at taking On the Prowl, 
Mostly because while your inner beast is active, you're going to be 30% faster. And I like this. I really do for this build because this kind of gives you the, the escape that you don't really have before. So now you can move in and out of combat a bit easier um, when you're human form instead of having to disengage or engage, disengage, all of that. Now at 16, this is where things get a little interesting. We're going to be taking um, Concentrated Blast. Now, while your inner beast is active, Gilnan Cocktail is going to deal 80% more damage. 80% more damage. Now, here's where the play around the first talent here comes into play. Um, Wolf Heart uh, basically allows you to reduce the cooldown on your inner beast. And this means that uh, basically the more attacks you're going to get out there, the more often you're going to be able to use it. But here's the kicker, and this is where I'm kind of questioning whether or not this might be a good talent to pick or not. If you're in a sustained team fight, every time you get an auto attack out while your inner beast is active, you're going to be able to refresh that cooldown. So if the enemy is retreating, that is when the, uh, the, the it comes into play where you're going to want a shorter cooldown, but if they're retreating, that means you probably won already, and you're going to be 30% faster, so you're still going to be able to get the auto attacks off. That's why I was leaning more towards the uh, perfect aim at the first talent tier because while I feel like the uh, Wolf Heart really synergizes well with the Concentrated Blast because 16 second cooldown versus a 9 second cooldown, I still feel like in a sustained team fight, which is where you really want to deal the maximum amount of damage you can get, you're still going to be able to get uh, the stacks refreshed when you really need to. Now, at level 20, this is where things get kind of interesting. You could take Gilnean Roulette. Um, this allows your um, your mark for the kill to pierce enemies and mark multiple targets, and then you can jump in and hit all of them if you really want to. And of course, the closest target is preferred. I prefer to take Hunter's Blunderbust. Now, if the enemy's team is doing uh, the enemy team's tank is doing their job, it means they are zoning for their team, which means that they're in the front and they can sort of prevent you from getting in to deal the damage, especially considering that you are kind of weak against um, stuns and slows and all that stuff. Now, the kicker here is, with Hunter's Blunderbuss, your basic attacks are in a splash for 100% of the damage behind the target. So now, you can hit that tank with your basic attacks, and that damage is then going to splash the people behind him. So now, he is in the front line, sort of tanking for his team, but it doesn't matter because you're still dealing damage to all of them. And since it's a lot easier to hit the tank and play safe, which is what you're going to want to do with this build, uh, you can still hit him with the Q, hit him with the auto attacks, and it's just going to help you out a lot. You're going to deal with a bunch of damage with this. This is kind of why I'm liking the Q build a bit more. Now, there is another build that I was looking at, and this is one that pretty much focuses on the inner beast and using your warden form. So, at the first talent here, you're going to take Wolfheart. At four, you're going to take Insatiable, which... Um, Basically, the one thing that I found when I was messing around with this build was you have very serious mana problems. So Insatiable is going to allow you to overcome those mana problems. Now, if you find that you're able to um, sustain yourself mana-wise, Thick Skin may not be a bad option for you, just because having the block going in is going to help you out a bunch. Now at 7, personally, I take Wizen Duelist, mainly because this is going to... Um, I like to deal a ton more damage. Basic attack damage is going to be increased by 3% to a maximum of 30% um, whenever you get a hero takedown. This bonus is going to uh, be removed on death. So the idea with this is you're already dealing 40% more damage in your warrior form, basic attacks. Now this is going to be even more. Um, and this damage is actually going to flow back over to your human form then too. So even when you're trying to play a little bit safer, trying to stay back before you jump in and just maul people to death, you're going to be able to deal even more damage. And... Um, this is basically like gathering power for basic attacks. So I, I'm a big fan of this, this ability for the Warden Form 1, just because it increases your damage by, well, 30% uh, at maximum stacks. So, for this talent here, for your Heroic, I think Go for the Throat for this build is the best option. Um, mainly because you're already jumping in at the enemy, and I feel like this has the potential of dealing more damage as opposed to Marked for the Kill. Now, both of these transform you into a Warden when you jump in, um, but I feel like Go for the Throat... It's going to allow you to jump in, and you're going to find the weakest heart. You're going to take them down. You can jump in at somebody else. Now, I know that this says that it can be used a second time within 10 seconds for free, and that is true. It can only be used a second time. You can't use this. So if you jump in, kill someone, jump in, kill somebody else, you that's it. You're done. And then it goes on cooldown for 60 seconds. 
Uh, there's a your level 20 talent will then allow you to continue to jumping, but you're not going to be there yet. At 13, personally, I think that um, on the prowl is the way to go for this one. Your inner beast is already going to be cooldown. Uh, be seeing a lot more reduced cooldown. Um, you're going to need the, the movement speed to chase people down. And uh, it's just going to help you out a ton in the long run. Just that, that extra speed to maneuver, body block, all of that. Now at 16, I think there are two choices you can go with here. Relentless Predator, depending on how many stuns the enemy team has. This is the one that reduces the duration of silences, stuns, slows, roots, and polymorphs against you by 75% while in working form. If they don't have many of them or they're not using them on you, uh, which is crazy, but if they're not, then you can go with Alpha Killer. Um, your Worgen basic attacks against enemy heroes are going to deal bonus damage equal to 3% of the hero's maximum health. So most people, it's 1.5%. For you, it's 3%. So now you're taking chunks of people's life. Chunks of it. And then at 20, I feel like there are two options with this. Honestly, I prefer the Unleashed just because you're really going to want to use your Go for the Throat when the enemy is low. Um, so if there's a big Wamba that goes off and the enemy is starting to get low, you're going to be able to jump around doing a bunch of damage and being able to finish a bunch of people off. But Tooth and Claw is not bad either just because of the other basic attack bonuses you're going to be getting. So the problem with this is that this only really functions well if the enemy is clumped up because then your base attacks are going to cleave for 100% of damage dealt to all of them. So it's going to be more of a, you know, figure this out for what you're looking for, uh, what the enemy team is doing, and how your team is playing. So those are just really two, two really quick looks at um, the talents for him, uh, the two talent builds. I'm going to be playing with them uh, throughout the week, and later on in the week I'm going to be bringing you guys a quick match showcasing them, uh, at least one of them, the one that I choose, the one that I feel like I, uh, is better for me and my play style. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this really quick look at my process. And uh, again, Graeming, he is a fun, fun, fun hero to play. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to bringing you guys more games from him in the future. So, uh, that's going to be it for today, though. Thank you all so much for watching. I apologize for all the rambling here, but I just want to get the information out to you guys, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, uh, I will catch you all later.